Happy Thursday, it's Cynthia Thurlow. I wanted to jump on live to talk about the number one reason that I have female clients come to me and are interested in working with me. If you're not familiar with who I am, my name is Cynthia Thurlow. I am a functional nutritionist and also a nurse practitioner and my specialty is female hormonal health. And the number one reason women will come to me is related to weight gain. And what I wanna talk about today are the limiting beliefs surrounding weight loss, which as you can well imagine is a very heated topic. We recognize that in our society that there are just so many people that are struggling with this issue, um, myself included. I have gone through that myself. I'm super sensitive to uh, women when they come to me with the pain point of gaining weight that they don't intend to have. And one of the things I wanna talk about is that as women get older, and by that I mean women over the age of 35, we know that statistically women will gain 12 to 15 pounds from the point that they're about 35 to 50, 12 to 15 pounds, and I bet you none of us want to gain that weight. Um, so I wanna kind of center on the fact that hormones are really at the crux of this issue, imbalances between sex hormones, cortisol, um, our adrenal hormones, et cetera, but also the mindset that we can out-exercise a bad diet. You know, when I was practicing as a nurse practitioner for 16 years, what did I tell my patients all the time? You just need to eat less and exercise more. It's not that simple. And so I wanna kind of touch on some of the things that have come to me over the last several years. Um, so one limiting belief is that age is the issue we're gaining weight. Um, I have clients in their 20s, I have clients in their 30s, 40s, and 50s, and it is not specific to any particular age group. So I don't want anyone to believe that it is something that just happens to women when they hit perimenopause, which is the 10 years preceding the time that we go through menopause. I want you all to understand this can happen at any point in our lives, and there should be no guilt associated with it. I know as healthcare providers, with great intentions, we talk to our patients like we really understand what's going on and what's at the root cause for all of the weight gain that they're experiencing. Some of it's related to stress. Some of it is related to hormone imbalances, yes. Some of it can be related to our lifestyle. We're gonna talk about those things. Another limiting belief is that food has nothing to do with weight gain. It has so much to do with weight gain. I want you to think about the, the most processed foods in our, in our food supply and recognize that they can impact our hormones in a very negative way. I also want you to think about the big pain points. These are, these are foods that are highly inflammatory, things like sugary foods, um, gluten, grains, dairy. I know those are all foods that are fun, and I'm not saying never to have them. I'm just saying we need a lot less of them in our diet. But for anyone to believe that food is not important, you're really doing yourself a tremendous disservice. There are specific tests that we can run that can determine how well we break down our food. And case in point, for myself, I had seven pounds I could not get rid of. It didn't matter how well I ate, how much I exercised, how much I slept, how tuned in my stress level was, I could not lose the seven pounds for three years. I finally lost it because I really finally figured out that I was not metabolizing. Some of the healthy food that I was eating was not metabolizing it well. And as soon as I eliminated those foods, which are fundamentally healthy foods, I'll touch on those in a second, um, all of a sudden the seven pounds, I finally got rid of it. And I help my clients do the same thing. Case in point, um, there is a specific test called the oat test, organic acid test. And I don't break down certain types of protein and certain types of fats well at all. That may change, it may not. Uh, because of that, I've always gravitated towards leaner proteins. I've always gravitated towards um, not as much fats in my diet. And really a lot of that is because intrinsically my body knew that I needed that. I'll give you an example of something I was eating that was inflaming my body and making it harder for me to lose weight. Avocado, gosh, avocado is a great food, but avocado for people that don't do, or their body doesn't deal well with it, is something they will struggle with. So that's just one example. Also, you know, dialing in on foods that are highly inflammatory, I kind of touched on them earlier, but finding out the personalized foods, that's one of the things I do with my female clients, what foods inflame you? Yes, they can still fundamentally be healthy foods, but if you continue to eat the foods that are inflaming your body, your body's gonna hold on to weight. And then lastly, talking about toxins, we don't talk enough about this as healthcare providers. Toxins in our environment, personal care products and food can have a huge impact. So if anyone believes that they aren't important, they're doing themselves a huge disservice. I want you to think about what you use on your body every day. What do we use? At a minimum, hopefully my dogs aren't gonna bark, um, at a minimum, men and women use deodorant, they probably use shampoo, they use soap, they use toothpaste. If you are using endocrine disrupting, 
products, sorry, those are the doodles. If you're using endocrine disrupting products, shh, sorry about that. If you're using endocrine disrupting products, it is going to make it so much harder for you to lose weight. It matters what we use on our skin. If you think it isn't important, this is something I'm so passionate about. Um, if you think it's not important what you're using on your body every day, you are foolish. That means things like aluminum-based deodorants. We don't need them. We, our bodies are designed to sweat. The um, fluoride-filled toothpaste that you're using, there's no correlation between fluoride and cavities. Um, we need to stop you know, propagating this nonsense. Um, if you look at um, societies that are um, more indigenous, uh, people that aren't exposed to uh, sugary foods, processed foods, westernized foods, they don't have the tooth decay that we Americans have. Anyway, um, thinking about lotions you use on your body, makeup, there's so many toxins in makeup. And think about, these are the products our children are using, young adults are using, can negatively impact our hormones, which can lead to weight gain. Um, when it comes to our environment, just things we're exposed to day to day, heavy metals, um, you know, things that, you know, toxins that we just don't think about, chemicals that we're exposed to. I know certainly in the hospital we needed to have um, some pretty hardcore uh, chemicals to clean things and disinfect, um, but we don't need those types of chemicals in our home. So certainly things you use to clean your home with, clean your toilet with, there are safer alternatives. I use vinegar, for example, in my wash, and that is a great deodorizer, um, and also is a natural fabric softener. And then lastly, kind of touching back again on food, um, that's why organic food is so important. There's so many less pesticides, chemicals that come in contact with the food that you are eating, super, super important. Um, also thinking about farm-raised, excuse me, you actually want wild-caught um, fish. You do not want farm-raised. Um, we call it frankenfish. If you look at the studies on the amount of PCBs and um, things that were thrown into the water supply that salmon out on the West Coast are exposed to, it's really kind of gross because we are what we eat. You want to make sure that you have um, grass-fed beef. You want to make sure that you can you buy the, the best quality food that your family budget permits. Uh, we eat less protein now because it's just so much more expensive when we are trying to eat organic. So those are three key ways that I see these limiting beliefs kind of entering our mindset, which can adversely impact our ability to lose weight, looking at age, food, and also toxins. Um, I want you to really think about it, irrespective of age, so, so important that we understand that it isn't just our age that impacts our ability to lose weight because I see people struggling at all different age points. Thanks for listening. Have a great night.